Hi everyone, my name's Liam. I'm the curator here at Monaghan County Museum. Thanks very much for watching the video. We're talking today about our current exhibition, War of Independence in Monaghan, and one specific part of that story, Monaghan and the Union. Now, the story of Monaghan during the War of Independence from 1919 to 1921 is slightly different maybe than the story perhaps in the southern part of the country in that we were, we're in an area which was very much beside the unionist dominated northern counties. Monaghan at the time had about a 25% Protestant population which was a fairly significant minority of people living in the county. Most of these people were loyalist in the sense that they wanted to, they wanted to remain within the union and you had about 75% of the population were Catholic. Again, broadly speaking, and this is a case of people who were, at this point, had moved away from the idea of living under the United Kingdom and wanted a country of their own. So you have the external struggle happening in the country and you have the internal conflict here in Monaghan. That happened in a number of different ways where you had many different events happening through the two years where you had neighbour fighting neighbour. This meant that this was quite a very much a personal war in many ways and we have many aspects of the exhibition here deal with that and one of the main focuses on attacks from neighbours on neighbours and we, that happened several different times during this period so much so that the Protestant population here in Monaghan felt the need to protect themselves and there were many meetings around Monaghan in this period in villages to Smithborough and Drum talking about ways but how the Unionist population in Monaghan, the Protestant population, could protect themselves from these attacks. And this eventually led up to the setting up of an organisation known as the B Specials. Now they were set up to essentially police the bordering area in the north of Ireland, predominantly Protestant uh, in makeup. And this was another aspect to this period. So you have the IRA fighting on one side, you have the British Crown Forces, which are made up of the Royal Irish Constabulary, which were the police at the time, and they were supported by now the infamous um, Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries. But then you also had the Beast Specials. So there was numerous different conflicts going on in this period, and it makes this story in the War of Independence slightly more unique. The Irish question was an important part of what was happening in the British Parliament in London at this point. What was the answer? What eventually came to the table was the idea of partition, creating two states within the country, one in the north and one in the south. And this led to what was known as the Government of Ireland Act, which set up two different states, Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, and it created what is now today the modern day border. Now three of these counties, Donegal, three of the counties in Ulster, Donegal, Calvin and Monaghan, found themselves on the southern side of that border. And the unionists in those counties, and indeed in Monaghan, felt in many ways that they'd been forgotten about. Indeed, the Ulster Unionist Council promote, or published a piece in the Belfast Telegraph in the mid-1920s saying that they had to, with regret, wring their hands of their brethren in Calvin, Monaghan and Donegal if they were to save themselves. Now, at the end of the war, in 1921, with the truce and eventually the signing of what was known as the Treaty, um, two governments were set up, one in Northern Ireland and one in Southern Ireland, in Belfast and in Dublin. Now, like the Unionists in Calvin and in Donegal, many of them felt that they did no longer wanted to live under the rule of an Irish government based in Dublin. So many of them moved north, and indeed a significant amount of them did. We see in the census in the mid-1920s that the population of Protestants in Monaghan has dropped significantly. So much so that today, in 1921, we had a population of around 25% Protestant. Today, it's a little around 7%. So it gives you an idea of how events that happened 100 years ago are affecting what happens today. And that's a key part of the story here in the museum. So we're going to see more of the videos. Don't forget to follow our YouTube channel or go to our Facebook page or Twitter page. Thanks for watching.